From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Roopcast, the light-hearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Tarleton and Peter Tischer. Hi, dear Roopcast fans, and welcome to this, well, I could say episode on the day after, the day after the Brexit, because uh, yesterday the British decided uh, 52% to 48% to leave the European Union. I am here with Mr. Charlton, but not with my usual partner, Mr. Roger Charlton, but with his brother, Neil Charlton. Hi, Neil. Hi, Peter. How are you? I'm fine. I'll ask you in a second how you are, but let me introduce you first. We flew in Neil especially for this episode because he's a political scientist and a longtime civil servant from Yorkshire, which is in the north of England. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, uh, before I ask you how you feel about your country that is going to leave the European Union, let me ask you, did you stay up all night to hear about the results? Well, I didn't stay up all night, Peter, but I stayed up till about two in the morning watching Channel 2 here in the Saarland. It was a very mm -hmm. interesting discussion and uh, showed a lot of knowledge about what was happening in Great Britain at the moment. And when I went to bed... Reuters, the news agency, had just issued a statement saying 52% were going to vote to remain in the EU. So I was able to get to sleep okay. with an easy mind because I cast my vote through the postal ballot system to remain in the UK. So I guess on this podcast, I better say where I stand. Mm -hmm. Very, yeah, very strongly, fair enough. Fair enough. strongly in favour of staying in the EU. So you can imagine this yeah. morning, I'm very disappointed. Yeah, I was going to ask you, how do you feel? Well, I kind of had a premonition that this was going to happen. Living in the north of England, uh -huh. it is very different from the so-called bubble of living in London, mm -hmm. where, um, as with Berlin here in Germany or Paris in France, there's a very big centralization mm -hmm. of political power mm -hmm. with the newspapers, with the media, politicians, civil servants, and so on. Mm -hmm. And it's very di easy to lose sight of what it's like in the rest of the country. And I, and I did work as a civil servant in London for two years. Okay. Did you hear anything from your folks back home? How they, did you, I don't know, you phoned your family? I was constantly texting my, my three children, all of whom voted for Remain. But the, the reason I kind of had this premonition, Peter, is in the last 10 days or so before I came over to the Zarland, I was very worried that the number of people who I would say are working class, Labour Party, or on the left, Green Party supporters, who said quite openly to me, knowing my views, I'm going to vote for Brexit. Uh -huh. And when I tried to get underneath that surface view, because to me it's an anti-intellectual thing to vote for a country like Great Britain, the fifth largest economy in the world. We are a trading nation. We know the high percentage of trade is with the European Union now. Why would you deliberately try to endanger your own country's economy? Mm -hmm. And there was no intellectual argument at all, Peter. Mm -hmm. that what I was picking up, and I think some of the media commentators have picked this up this morning, mm -hmm. that it was an emotional response. It was not a, a, a response of the intellect. I, I, was, I was actually wondering uh, whether this has maybe almost a tradition and whether that is actually behind that, because uh, at least as far as I understood, a lot of the people who are in favor or who were in favor of Brexit are not going to benefit Absolutely. from the consequences. Absolutely. So it can't be really a learned decision, can it? So I was asking myself, is this maybe even a cultural issue that the British like this idea of isolation? Uh, to use an old fashioned term, I would that that were the case. That's a complicated <laughs> verb to use, but that is definitely not the issue. The issue is about immigration mm -hmm. or the perception of immigration. There's an issue about the movement of people across Europe. Mm -hmm. There's the focus of the TV cameras on the Channel Tunnel and at Calais. And what people in the north of England believe is some kind of flood tide of people coming into the UK. Mm -hmm. Now... If we unpick that a but little you bit. haven't had any uh, anything near no. of what we had in no. Germany with about a million people coming in last year from Syria, I take it alone. And that's why I'd emphasize the word perception, right. because there is a big difference between people's perception 
what they see in television, what they hear on the radio, what they read in their daily papers, and the reality. Mm -hmm. Because the reality of where I live in the north of England, which is very similar to the Saarland, where we used to have a steel industry, where we used to have many coal mines, where we had further north shipbuilding, all of those industries have now gone. And just like here in the Saarland, where my brother works, this area of very high social and economic deprivation is trying desperately to find a new way of going forward in the next 10, 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. So, to answer your question, mm -hmm. apologies for it being long-winded. No, it's okay. Um, I think there's a, a deep resentment in the north of England against London and the South East. Mm -hmm. and, and this is manifested during the Brexit debate, certainly, by conservative, mainly conservative politicians arguing with each other mm -hmm. about what was going to be best for the country and throwing statistics around but not meeting the needs of working people who might not have a job mm -hmm. or if they do have a job, it's on what we call a zero hours contract, mm -hmm. which may well be coming into Germany before long. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. You talked about the division of your country, this, uh, and you can see that from the votes. If you look at a map, that there are a lot of areas in favor of Brexit and others that are completely against and by a large margin. So, of course, the next question, which you've already addressed in this podcast, but I'd like to ask you, will be, will Scotland leave the Union now? That's a really tricky question because you'll be aware it's only two years ago that Scotland had a referendum yes. on that very issue. We covered that on this podcast. And it was very close. Yeah. You know, so Scotland... Closer, is, closer than this one. Yes. So Scotland is itself divided. But to remember, Scotland was a separate country until 1707. Was it? And it had its own what, very close relationship with France. And France had an embassy in Edinburgh and so on. Um, the north of England certainly has been very important, and, and I hope I've emphasised that some of the things are to do with deprivation, the way people feel about the economy, and the schism, I would say, between north and south, which is very strong. It's mainly, I would say, actually not a geographical schism. It's a schism between the industrial centres, wherever they be, and the rural areas. Because if you look at the political map of England, it looks mainly blue, conservative, because mm -hmm. all of the shire counties are conservative. And it's covered with red dots, which are the inner city areas, mm -hmm. such as London, Manchester, Birmingham, Leeds, Liverpool, yeah. which are labour areas. Okay. And that's, that's really the north and south. Okay. Sp speaking of north and south, there, there is another, if I may say so, odd one out in this, uh, in this vote, which is Northern Ireland. Yeah. And, of course, same question, different area. Um, do you think Northern Ireland will be tempted to maybe join the Republic of Ireland now? Well, looking at the, the map of the results from last night, again, the majority of people in Northern Ireland voted for Remain, as the people in Scotland did. So there's another big difference from England. But I guess that's a, a really big issue, because maybe people listening to the podcast don't realise it, that the only land boundary that the United Kingdom has with the European Union is the land boundary between Northern Ireland, which is part of the United Kingdom, and the Republic of Ireland in the south. And that, of course, has it not just about politics, it's also about religion, it's also about history. I've got one last question about the future, and I would like to quote now from a, an email that I got from a dear friend of mine, John Morley, who also works in a language centre. And he actually sent me an email with a quote from Friedrich Schiller, the German playwright. In German it says, Mit der Dummheit kämpfen selbst Götter vergebens. In English that gives you, against stupidity, even gods fight in vain. He sounds very mad, actually. Do you think that your fellow citizens will remain mad at the other party for a long time? Well, we, we also have a saying, which I think comes from the States originally, which is about turkeys voting for an early Christmas. <laughs> and I think a lot of people in the north of England, within the next two, three, four, five years, will come to regret, sincerely, the impact of all of this. Because as I look around where I live, you can see the European flag 
flying over a whole load of buildings. You can see a whole load of road, rail, infrastructure projects funded from the European Social Fund or the Regional Transport Fund. And people seem to forget the very positive effects it's had on the north of England since we joined the European Union in 1975, the last referendum. And I guess when you're voting on emotion, the kind of things we've been talking about earlier, Peter, you forget some of the perhaps the more sensible intellectual arguments. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's what's happened in a lot of cases. I think we're going to have to go on with this, uh, with discussing this issue. Uh, we'll have to close this special issue for today. Thank you ever so much, Neil, for giving you this first-hand take on the Brexit decision in the United Kingdom. And we'll be back very soon with another special issue on Brexit. Uh, uh, can I ask you to stay maybe a little bit longer in this island so you can be on that next one? Well, when's my flight back? I look, but it's, I think it's still a, a week ago. Oh, sure, that's no problem. Okay, great. So we'll have you back uh, very soon. Bye-bye, dear listeners. Bye, bye-bye. listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.